Hello and welcome to my blanket stitch tutorial. The blanket stitch is usually used to give a nice finish along a raw fabric edge. Therefore it's usually used on fabrics that don't fray. For instance, felt. And that's what I'm going to be using today. Here is a piece of thin white felt. You'll often find blanket stitch used on the edges of tea towels or blankets, maybe pillowcases as well. And it works particularly well, as I said, on raw edges. So materials like fleece and felt are perfect. The thread I'm going to be using is a cotton crochet thread in size 8. It's comparatively thick because I want it to be seen. And that's the thing about blanket stitch, it's a decorative element. And that's also the reason why I'm using a contrasting colour. I think red on white looks particularly good. The thicker the material you're stitching, the thicker the thread should be in order to stand out enough. For thinner fabrics you might use embroidery thread or a thinner crochet thread. And for chunky fabrics you might use a yarn instead of a thread. I'm using a leather needle just because I find that the point on a leather needle goes through felt a lot easier. However, any sharp hand sewing needle that has an eye big enough for the thread you're using should work. The reason I have beads in this picture is because I'm also going to be showing how to do beaded blanket stitch, but that's going to be published as a separate video. It is possible to add a blanket stitch to the edges of a fraying fabric, but you would fold the edges of those fabrics inwards to hide them first, then press them with an iron before adding the blanket stitch. That way you hide the fraying edges on the inside of what you're sewing. The first thing you'll need to do is thread your needle. You then put a knot at the end of that thread. Try to make sure that the length of thread you're using is enough to do the whole project. You can change the thread halfway through your project but that means you'll end up having a couple of knots right in the middle of what you're sewing. It's much better to overestimate than underestimate how much you're going to need. A little tip for putting the knot in the end of the thread is to knot the thread around the needle and then use the needle to pull that knot close to the end. That way you don't waste any of the thread. You can start from the right hand side and move left or start from the left hand side and move right when doing the blanket stitch. It totally depends what's more comfortable for you. To start off I'm going to take my needle from in between the felt layers to the back of the felt. The purpose of this is to hide the knot between the layers of fabric. So I take my needle from in between the layers and out the back like so. I aim to do this about 5mm from the top edge but you can make the stitches as long as you want. I don't measure it at all with a ruler, I just do it by eye. You then take the needle to the front and try and push the needle through both layers of felt so that it comes out at the same point as before. The closer you can get to the point where the thread leaves the back layer of felt, the neater the stitch will be. Once I've pulled that tight, I take my needle between the felt layers from right to left under the thread that passes between the layers of felt and that is my first stitch completed. Now traditionally with blanket stitch, the length of these stitches is the same as the gap between each stitch. So I'm going to aim to space my stitches about 5mm apart. But it's completely up to you what length of stitch you're going to use and how you're going to space them out. 
To do the next stitch, you're going to go from front to back through both layers of felt. In my case, I aim to put the needle through five millimeters from the first stitch and five millimeters from the top edge. I pull the thread so it's almost pulled tight, but there's just one small loop of thread remaining. I then take my needle from right to left through this loop. Then I pull the thread tight, making sure that the stitch is positioned vertically. If you find it difficult to make stitches of the same length, then a little tip is to use masking tape or washi tape and just place a piece parallel to the top edge. So for instance, in my case, I will put the tape five millimeters down from the top edge. You then have a line or a guide to work with. I'm just doing mine by eye, but it's completely up to you. So you take your needle from the front to the back again, five millimeters along and five millimeters from the top edge through both felt layers, pull almost tight and then go from right to left through that loop. I'm going to repeat this until I do the last stitch on the top edge, which will be about five millimeters from the right hand edge. Something to be aware of whilst doing blanket stitch is just to keep in mind that you want all of the stitches along the edge to be evenly spaced. So when you get nearer to the corner or the end of your fabric, just bear that in mind because you don't want to end up with a gap that's much bigger at the end or a couple of stitches cramped together. You want to try and evenly space them and it's something just to consider whilst you're stitching. If you're worried about this and you want to make it look really neat and professional, you can make a guide, perhaps by marking points on a piece of masking tape or washi tape to show you where to do your stitches. This will just take the worry out of it and just make sure that you're placing all your stitches perfectly evenly apart all along the edge. So now I've done all the stitches I want to do along the top edge. You still want to keep that even spacing when you're going around corners. So ideally, I want a stitch five millimeters from the right hand side. And I also want a stitch down the right hand side that is five millimeters from the top edge because this will create a nice little neat square in the top right corner here which just looks a lot neater and more professional. So once I've done that last stitch on the top edge, I'm going to do a diagonal stitch. Now some people don't do a diagonal stitch on a corner. They instead skip ahead and just do a stitch that's at right angles to this last stitch. So it's completely up to you if you decide to do this stitch or skip ahead to the next one. To do it, I'm going to take the needle through that same point that I went through for the last stitch. So the needle comes out the back and once again, I go from right to left through the loop. But this time I'm going to position the thread so that it lies diagonally and points at 45 degrees up to that corner. It can be a bit of a fiddle. Just make sure you don't pull the thread too tight because that will squash the corner up. The next stitch is horizontal. So I take the needle from front to back through that same point for the third time. And once again, I go from right to left through that loop and pull it tight, making sure it lies horizontally. And then you carry on exactly the same as you did on the top edge, evenly spacing your stitches out. Once you get comfortable with the blanket stitch, you can always experiment and do different patterns. For instance, you could make the length of the blanket stitch 
all different sizes. So you could do one short, one long, one short, one long, etc. Or just try and make some kind of pattern with it. You could even try and create a scalloped edging. To finish off the blanket stitch, take your needle through the back layer of felt, from the back to the front, going through the point where the thread has previously left the felt. When you bring the needle upwards between the felt layers, make sure that it comes up between the two pieces of thread. You want it to come up in between the threads so that when you tighten it, it forms a knot like so. You then take the needle from right to left under where the thread straddles the felt layers and then just do a normal knot by taking the needle back through the loop and pulling tight. Cut off the excess thread to leave at least one inch of thread remaining and then push this thread tail between the felt layers to hide it. And there you go, that's how you do a blanket stitch. I hope this video has been helpful for you and thank you very much for watching.